Okay, here we go. Getting to your questions as, as soon as I can. Um, a lot of times I will think of some kind of tip that has helped me in any way throughout the week. And um, I think today I'm just going to get straight to your questions because I have so many. Okay. One, someone asks, why would a woman cheat after eight years and blame their partner? Why do women cheat? Um, cheating isn't a gender thing. And, and you know, I, I just want to point out uh, there are many reasons why cheating happens. And um, it, sometimes cheating, I'm, I'm not saying it's okay, but um, may not even be about uh, you or, or – well, let, let's go through let's go through some of the reasons because I don't think we think about this because when when someone cheats on us, of course we're going to take it personally. Of course we feel betrayed, um, and we instantly think it's just because the relationship's bad. Now, obviously, like if this was Family Feud, and and I forgot who I forgot who hosts Family Feud. I, I mean, I know it changed, it's changed many times, but the, the 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 host says top five reasons why people cheat. Of course. One of the top reasons is there's drift in the relationship, right? There's problems in the relationship. So someone who um, feels lonely, distant, angry, whatever, um, encounters someone new, and uh, maybe maybe the new person, maybe the situation also encourages the cheating, and they, you know, or or maybe there's like an uh, uh, an emotional cheating thing happens, a build up. And then a relationship is formed, uh, and then it just takes you know the right, the right party or the right uh, whatever, and suddenly you have cheated. So that would be very high up there. But also, um, I gotta say, uh, a lot of times people uh, here's some other reasons why people may cheat. They got married very fast, and um, they have not had a lot of experiences when it comes to love, intimacy, sex, whatever. Um, now that they're older, uh, they're now curious about other types of connection. Does that make it right? No. But there's a lot of people who, you know, at age 21, 22, uh, get married. Suddenly they have kids. You know, by the time they're 30, they're like, I have never loved anyone else. Or um, I'm curious about different types of connection, right? And then something happens. Uh, and then, and then, and then, you know, suddenly they, they cheat. Um, a lot of times, sorry, things are popping up on my screen about screen about, uh, using AI features. It's happening everywhere. This AI thing. I, I'm curious to see, okay, stop. I got to stop myself because I, I t tend to bird walk. Um, another reason why someone may cheat is because they're unhappy and disconnected, um, within themselves right like they might be going through something personal you know i think any time that we are disconnected with self there's going to be an outward ripple i don't want to use the word consequences but it's going to impact it's going to ripple outward and so it's going to affect your own relationship if you're in one um the way that it ripples ma might manifest in different ways but if you are disconnected unhappy and within self, and you don't have uh, a sense of purpose, you, you're in a shitty job, you're going through a, a, some kind of winter, um, cheating may happen because of that, not necessarily because your relationship is so bad. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? Now, that being said, if you are disconnected with self and unhappy in life, of course, that's also going to directly impact the relationship. So when the host says survey says some of the, some of the reasons on the the uh, going back to the family feud example uh, thing metaphor uh would be so the obvious one unhappy in a relationship uh disconnected drifting etc um unhappy with self and life so cheating can become something that uh, a form of escape right uh it's exciting uh, another one, another panel can be uh, you get married, have kids very fast, so you don't have a lot of love experiences, so you're curious and thirsty. 
for them and uh, the, you know, the right party or the right situation or your partner's away and suddenly um, – and, and to be a little more specific, a lot of emotional cheating happens when people are not emotionally – connected to their partners right so like i think because it's 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 less about i think sex more about emotional disconnect at home so if you're in a relationship where you're not getting a lot of emotional connection and then you get emotional connection from someone else uh, i think that a lot of the, the 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 cheating that i've um heard from clients and friends and people have been usually emotionally based. Now, I don't want to make this a gender thing. I know this question, uh, this person asks, why do women cheat? Um, uh, this is a generalization, but emotionally disconnected may be a reason women cheat more. This may not be true. I don't know. I, have, I don't have data on this, but I would think. And then men, um, physical connection. So. Um, and for, and, and, you know, they, they, it, it could also be that they have a ton of sex at home. Um, but they're, they're, they're cheating to, f uh, fulfill ego feeling desired or, or something within self that's lacking, or maybe they just cheat because the opportunities there, you know, like, anyway, my point is there's no, there's no one reason why people cheat. I think it's uniquely uh, different for the person, their story, their situation, right? So I don't even remember what the question was. Oh, why do, yeah. So that's why people, some of the reasons why people cheat, not just women. Okay. What music do you have in heavy rotation right now? Uh, I'm just going to pick this one because it's light. Um, I, <laughs> quick story. I was at the gym today and, you know, at the gym, uh, I do a lot of lot of lot of CrossFit, so they're blasting. The thing about CrossFit gyms, which which I love and may be kind of um, annoying for other people, is um, people are uh, uh, usually half naked. Um, we we are allowed to take our shirts off, <laughs> and you know I, I've been CrossFitting for 15 years. It's not like it's not like a bragging aesthetic. We're, I I've come accustomed to taking my shirt off because. Um, when you're doing the butterfly pull-ups and you're, you know, you got the chalk on your hand and all this, it just, there's a freeing feeling. It, it's almost like you're working out at home in your garage. It, it's like a comfortable feeling. It's not like a showing off feeling. And so when you're doing all these movements where they're like gymnastic movements, um, it just feels good to, to not have a shirt. So I've just, over the, over the 15 years, I've come so accustomed to that. And also, I, I'm, I'm super, I get sweaty, very, I'm drenched in sweat. So to have a wet t-shirt on, it just feels heavy. So that's, that's usually why I take my shirt off, and that's why in my social media videos, I, I don't have a shirt on. Um, maybe for some, it's coming from an ego place. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so... My point is, uh, the, the shirts are off, the music blasting. It feels kind of like you're working out in your, in your garage, right? And I think that's kind of how CrossFit started. And so today, uh, and usually the music is like hip hop or like rock or, you know, ACDC. Um, but, but today I was, I was taking a class and the guy was playing, the coach was playing because it's up to the coach what kind of music uh, um, he plays. And the music was like, Jams from my high school that are that are like unknown songs, like Jesus and Mary Chain and Old School New Order, and I was like, "Dude, how how did you? Why are you playing this music? I love it, but like," and uh, I said, "Was this music you listened to in high school?" And he said, uh, "No, my parents did." <laughs> he said, "This is the shit my parents were listening to," and I was like, "Oh yeah, of course." You weren't even born. I was in high school listening to this shit. You weren't even born, and it was just a, um, it was just a realization of how old I was. By the way, this Wednesday I'm turning fifty-one. Basically, he was saying you could be my father, dude. Your list. I'm listening to some vintage shit my parents listening to, or or, or, uh, or have listened to, and uh, you were listening to this when you were in high school so you're basically you're old enough to be my dad is what he was saying anyway 
Um, oh, oh, to answer your question, I, that whole story was uh, what what music do you have in heavy rotation? Um, old high school jams, um, and also like shit from the eighties, uh, and not just alternative or rock, but like um, some some hip hop and some some other stuff, uh, old school. I mean, everything from like Prince to Madonna to I mean anything, and and I I think I I uh, you know nothing makes a snap back and. Uh, nothing becomes a time machine faster than a music, right? And so I think obviously it's the nostalgia. It's not so much – it may not be that I like that song, but it's the body remembering that song and taking me back to that place. Someone asks, uh, short six-month, one-year relationship most of my life. Know my patterns, but losing hope at age 31. Ooh. Well, uh, I love that you know your patterns because that's that's where we got to start, you know. Um, there is truth in patterns. I mean, that's data, right? So if you have a pattern of being in six month to a year relationship, and then that's like that's the pattern. Uh, my question to you is, what, what what's your contribution to the expiration of those relationships? Are you sabotaging? Are you um, like as as the relationship gets more intimate, does that make you run? Is there um, and then what and then what's underneath the behavior, right? Are you running because you're afraid to be intimate? Are you running because you're an avoidant? Are you running because you have a fear of of abandonment? Are you running because you don't want to truly show yourself because you have not practiced vulnerability and that ter that's terrifying? Um, or it could be all of the the above, right? So um, not only knowing the patterns, but then investigating, exploring the why. And I think this is what's really important. And this is what happens in therapy rooms, right? Um, here's my pattern. So in this case, this person asking a question about um, only being in short-term relationships. Um, and, and I got to say, you know, you're only 50% of a relationship. So there might be other stuff happening that has nothing to do with you. But what is your pattern? Where does that come from? Follow that thread down. And you're going to understand yourself better, right? So that's like half of the work. And then the other half is, okay, I need to stop doing this. Well, it's going to be uncomfortable. And it may mean that because um, once you're aware that you are stopping or leaving or breaking up or whatever at around six months to a year, well, then the work would be to um, sit in it, to sit in it. And you're going to squirm. And you're going to be like, holy shit. And also, it's going to feel like the, the vice is tightening where it's like, I've never been. We're a year in plus two weeks. I should have been out by now, but I'm still here. Well, this is where the stretch is. And I mean, don't just stay for the sake of staying, but as long as it's good and it feels honest to you, see if you can then um, stay in it and then process what is activated and everything that's coming up. And and this this is what uh, I talk about when when uh, I say you got to swim past the breakers, swim past this, and then you're giving yourself a new love experience, and then you are um, finding more calm, right? And I think this is also where the rewiring happens. Uh, there's nothing more convincing than an experience. So you're not just thinking about what it feels like to love someone after a year, but you are giving your body the experience of that. And uh, yeah. It can be slippery and shaky and uncomfortable, but there's something on the other side of that, and that is um, a new version of you because this version of you now can be in a relationship that's more than six months to a year. Does that make sense? Someone asks, um, how can someone leave an unfinished business after three years? Just ignored me. Well, um, this happens all the time. People ghosting, and it doesn't matter if it's a business partner or a uh, someone you've been dating, um, or you know, I was going to say friends, but actually, I don't think friends ghost. Um, that's really interesting. Why? Why is it that our friends don't ghost us as much as like business partners and um, you know people who who we date and, and are intimate with? Is it because with friends we build more um, trust? Is there le is there less to be afraid of? Is there? I don't know. But um, and I don't know even know if it's true. But uh, I, I think I don't know a lot of friends who just ghost. Now I think friendships fade. I mean, I 
I have many friendships that have kind of, you know, we had the magical summer or the years back then and we've drifted apart. So that's, I think that's, that's normal. Um, but just flat out ghosting, it usually happens in, in, in dating experiences, um, in relationships and also a lot of business partners. Um, there may be many reasons, but usually it's because uh, people are scared to have hard conversations. Um, people don't know how. People would rather just bounce, um, walk out the <laughs> walk out the back without saying bye, which is basically what I do at every social event. Um, it's fear. It's fear. You know, it's irresponsible. Um, but I think um, I think people are scared to do that, but also. Um, um, they're they're also afraid to uh, hurt people's feelings, you know. Um, and then I, I I think that uh, we have not practiced this. I mean, when when do we actually practice ending relationships, consciously uncoupling or um, with business partners? Like, when do we ever practice? This is the way to do it. I mean, we we don't. <laughs> we do our best when when the when the situation happens, but uh, I don't think we have a lot of practice with that. And so, because of that, many of us we just ghost, you know. Fall in love with an avoidant. Oh, fell in love with an avoidant. I ended it because no commitment, but miss her terribly. Um, I wonder if you ended it too soon. This person says, I ended it because no commitment. So I don't know what that means, commitment. You know, when you're dating someone, uh, um, here's, my, here's, my, um, here's my, I don't know what, uh, annoying, here's my problem with this generation of people dating. Okay. I think because... I mean, it's part of social media. Um, um, I, I think because uh, we are hearing in stereo daily what is healthy, what is not healthy. We're also labeling people very fast, right? This person is a narcissist. This person is this. This person is that. Um, I think we're 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 seeing a red. F I think I think we're seeing pink flags, and we're thinking they're red flags, and we're bouncing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think, and listen, I know that it's important to have non-negotiables. And if you know right away with someone that you're dating that it's not going to work, then then yes, you don't want to waste people's time. And and I get all that, but I I think many people um, they leave too soon without the full exploration, you know. Um, and I think it's because we are so, especially today with social media and and wellness and mental health that. Um, there are so many people talking into our ears about what to do, what not to do, what to look for, blah, 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 that we are on high alert. You know, we're on high alert. And so when we meet someone and they don't check all the boxes or they are an avoidant or an anxious or whatever, or they don't, you guys don't share the same love language or, or whatever, because you read a book or because people are talking so much in your ear about what to do, and what not to do. Um, a lot of people end things too soon. You know, I think we have to play things out. Like, listen. If the person is an avoidant, oh, that doesn't mean you can't have a, a relationship with this person. I mean, people grow and change and evolve, right? Uh, and also, what, what, is, what is the avoidant activating in you? So if you're ending things because the person tends to swing toward an, an avoidant attachment style, the answer isn't to just bounce. The, the answer is to explore what is being activated in you, especially if you're more of an anxious type. Right, because an avoidant is going to activate an anxious attachment style, and vice versa, and then work through that. Um, the other value of staying in something longer is because you can use it for growth for yourself. So even if the relationship doesn't work out, you can grow from that experience. Like there's value in that, and that's my other piece. Is uh, my other uh, uh, problem with uh, uh, people's mindset with dating is they're not seeing dating as a chance to grow. They're seeing dating as I need to find the one. And if this person doesn't match everything that I'm looking for, that I'm wanting, then they're out. I don't have time. You know, um, I get it. Your time's valuable. But 
what if you saw dating or any kind of human exchange as an opportunity to grow, you know, any kind of activation, if you're going to, I know I'm holding a chop. I don't know what this is. It's a chopstick that I use for, uh, if you're watching this on, on <laughs> this episode on YouTube or, or Instagram, I have, a, I'm, I have a chopstick in my hand. It's very random. Everything I do is very random. I use this chopstick as a uh, microphone holder for when I do stuff in the sauna. It's actually a beautiful chopstick. Look at this thing. It's got some writing on it. I, I don't, I can't write Korean or I think it's Japanese. I don't know, but it's got, it's beautiful. It's not just like a wooden chopstick. It's a fancy chopstick. Um, but I, my gripe, that's, that's the word I was looking for. One of my gripes with people dating and their mindset is uh, they're not sitting in things that are uncomfortable, knowing that there's value on using the dating experience and, 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 other, and connections to grow instead. They're just trying to find, quote unquote, the one. Does it make sense? So let's use dating as a mental, emotional gym, as a vehicle, as a catalyst for us to learn things about ourselves and not put so much weight on if this person is going to be our person, but more so, what can we learn from this? How can we grow, right? So you date an avoidant, or you fell in love with the, this person fell in love with the, an avoidant. Okay, great. But this person ended it because the person's being an avoidant. Well, if you know this person is being an avoidant, what is it activating in you? And, 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 and can you actually, um, both of you talk about this and work through it, especially if you fell in love? So then what do you do? Go find another person who then happens to be avoidant, and then you're like, oh, fuck, I got I to gotta leave again. Well, then you're just cementing old patterns. <sighs> I talk a lot. I need to put some fucking periods after my sentences. I'm just one run-on sentence. Thank God I have editors for my books, or else it would just be an endless run-on sentence and lots of just random bird walking, just like I'm painting. Like an abstract painting. Like I'm just... All right. Um, next question. Maybe we have time for one more. Let me see here. Let me try to find a good one. Okay. Since there was a question on cheating, um, here's another question. Um, how do I create a safe space for my partner's fears as we work through prior infidelity so i'm assuming the person asking this question cheated they both decided they want to work through this and so how do you create a space for your partner's fears uh well i want to say that if you cheated on your partner um even though your partner is deciding to trust you you got to earn that shit back you know just because someone says okay I know you cheated. I forgive you. I'm going to try to forgive you. And so um, I want to still be with you. Let's work on this. That doesn't mean that suddenly tomorrow the person trusts you 100%. That's not realistic, right? That means now you guys are on a process of forgiveness. And, and maybe for the person that cheated, forgiving self, you're in the process of trusting each other. Um, and it's both people too, because maybe the person cheated because the just there's been broken trust in the relationship, right? I don't, I don't know. Maybe that was one of the reasons which which created drift. But the trust has to be earned; it's not given. So you have to ask your partner, like, how can I earn your trust back? Um, I love that you're creating it. Oh, you're asking, how do I create a space? Well, that's how you create a space. You're um, asking your partner, how can I? create a safe space uh, for both of us to kind of go through this journey. What are you struggling with and how can I support you in that? Um, and, 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 and how can I earn your trust back, right? Now, the person that was cheated on, here's what you can't do because this happens so much. They pull out the cheating card. Whenever there's a fight, oh, you cheated. Remember that? Remember, remember what you did to me? Now, that's not fair to keep pulling that out. It's, you're pulling scabs if you have decided to forgive this person and move on. 
every time you pull the card out that reminding your partner that the that that uh, that he she they cheated you you're just you're you're breaking trust again you're starting over you're um i mean it's telling of where you're at you're obviously still angry and you have resentment and all that um which is fair but then that's something that you have to kind of process with a therapist or you know you can process some of it with your with your partner but that's your responsibility is to work through that because if you keep pulling that card out it it's 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 people are wasting time instead of building something or rebuilding something um you're just what's the what's that you know when you play jenga and you and you 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 pull out you pull out a piece of the one of the the wood blocks and the whole thing comes crumbling every time you hold the cheating card out and say you fucking cheated on me remember that you're pulling the Jenga thing and the whole thing's crumbling down. So one of the things that we can't do is uh, pull that card out. Now we can say, listen, I'm struggling with this. We can say, hey, uh, yeah, you're going away on this trip and uh, it's very hard for me because I'm still learning to trust you. Um, and then and then the partner says, well, what can I do to um, to help you with this? Do you want me to um, text you every day? Do you want me to um, FaceTime you? Do you want me, do you want to know my itinerary? Like, what, what? How can I support you? Right. So, it's that conversation, you know. And then the other thing about cheating, which I think uh, I've, I've heard so many couples do this, is like the cheater will say, "I said I'm sorry. What the fuck do you want me to do? Like that kind of stuff, right? Like, <laughs> like I cheated. You forgave me." And um, what do you want me, what else do you want me to do? Do you want me to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, that's also damaging and hurtful and impatient. And I, I think that's also a reflection of one's guilt, right? That the person is vomiting onto the other person in the relationship. They're, they're both reactions. Uh, so whether you're holding up the cheating card and punishing someone because they've cheated on you, or if you are saying, you know, I did all these things. I should be clear. But if you're being very impatient with your partner for giving you, um, that's also a reaction. So I think both things are a reaction of something else that's happening internally that we have a responsibility to work through. Couples counseling, I think, is imperative when it comes to um, couples trying to heal from infidelity. Infidelity, by the way, is um, going back to family feud. <laughs> uh, what is what is one of the things that most couples uh, struggle repairing? Survey says I would say number one or two is infidelity. Most people cannot move past it, forgive. I mean, they they try, they say, but the actual execution of it is very difficult, and um, people end up um, holding it over other people's heads. Um, people end up not being patient. People end up being resentful. You know, both both sides, right? And also, uh, uh, many couples don't do individual work and why the cheating happened. There's just a lot of pointed fingers and and that kind of stuff. Because, um, like I, this is a good place to end. Because, like I started with the first conversation or the first question, um, there are things happening underneath that is different and unique to the individual and their story of why the behavior of infidelity happens. It's not just because someone wants sex or someone's attracted to someone. Um, I mean, of course, there are, there are cases where that could, it could just be that, right? But most of the time, I would say uh, there are things happening underneath, deeper things, right? And, and there are things that are happening within self, not just the relationship. Yeah. All right. Thank you for listening. And um, we'll continue to do my best to answer your questions as long as you keep sending them to me. Be well.